Welcome back. I have had multiple requests on this channel to have a look at OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. And as it is one of the, the few big name distributions of Linux that I have yet to delve into in any great depth, I've covered OpenSUSE Leap, um, their kind of their static release model of uh, of OpenSUSE several times on this channel and uh, and OpenSUSE 15.1 did come out as kind of like a service pack release uh, for that desktop. A lot of love for the OpenSUSE project uh, but their rolling release Tumbleweed was never something that I have played around with like ever and I've gotten many requests over the years to uh, to look into it. Now here's my hesitation. OpenSUSE Tumbleweed uh, and OpenSUSE in general for me anyway does take a fair bit of work to set it up the way I like. In fact, I did a series years ago on moving into OpenSUSE because I really wanted to give it a fair go. And I uh, tweaked it a whole bunch and did a few episodes on that. I'll see if I can chuck a link up in the cards to that playlist. Uh, but this distribution that you're looking at right now is, uh, is OpenSUSE Tumbleweed kinda in that it is, uh, it does actually use OpenSUSE Tumbleweed as its, as its main thing. But in terms of the ISO that I downloaded, it is Gecko, Gecko Linux. So today's video is going to be talking about Gecko Linux and why you as a desktop oriented user might want to check out what Gecko Linux are up to as opposed to what OpenSUSE are doing um, with their default ISO releases. So let's get into it. All right, so first things first, uh, for a bit of context, at the moment, this, uh, this release is running inside a, uh, a virtual machine through GNOME boxes this time, instead of VMware. I was having a few issues with VMware, uh, and so I decided to give GNOME boxes a bit of a try. If you have any suggestions of how to get 3D acceleration happening inside GNOME boxes, that'd be great, because right now Plasma is kind of very simple in terms of animations and transparencies and all that fun stuff. Anyway, uh, let's just take a quick look here, right out of the gate, when you um, basically cold boot OpenSUSE on the Plasma desktop, uh, or rather, I should say a Gecko Linux, because technically that is what it is. Uh, we're using about 533 meg of RAM, which is very respectable for a desktop operating system as full featured as Plasma, as we've talked about many times on the channel in, in the past. And uh, the other thing is, is that being a rolling release, we are running at the, uh, at the absolute latest version of uh, Plasma. So we've got 5.17.3 and uh, we've got Linux kernel 5.3.11. Okay, now I'm gonna try and frame my comments into two different sections. I'm gonna talk about what makes Gecko Linux unique first, and then I'm gonna talk about OpenSUSE Tumbleweed uh, in the second part. Now, I guess the, the criticism that I could very well cop here, and it might actually be warranted, is that, well, you can't give a fair comment about OpenSUSE Tumbleweed because you are using a spin off of it, or you are using a variation thereof. and I think there might be some validity to that argument, so I'll let it pass. Um, but there are good reasons why I did choose to go down this route and why I wanted to feature this project on the channel as opposed to stock OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. So first of all, I, let's dig into, um, before we go any further, let's look at how you would actually download and use OpenSUSE Tumbleweed if you just wanted straight Tumbleweed without any of the tweaks that the Gecko Linux team have made. You would go to opensuse.org and again, love the SUSE project uh, and, uh, and what OpenSUSE have done over the years. They're, they're just a technically amazing uh, distribution and, uh, and I love them for it. They've got an amazing website. You can either download Leap or you can download Tumbleweed. I'm going to click on Tumbleweed as if I was going to install that. I would say install Tumbleweed and it will take me to their download page where you can uh, basically select a different uh, ISO based on what you want. Now, the, uh, the issue here that I have is that um, if you wanna do a proper install and, and not have anything break or be weird for you, you usually have to download the full four gigabyte DVD. This includes the major desktop environments and most of the software that most people want. Uh, you can, however, um, download live uh, images of the different desktop environments, but it says that they should not be used to install or upgrade Tumbleweed. So you need to keep this in mind. You can't actually install these images onto your hard drive. Okay, now let's contrast this with Gecko Linux and I'll show you what these guys have going on. Now Gecko Linux basically originated as a project to kind of help 
uh, smooth over some of the edges that OpenSUSE will not include in their distribution by default, mostly for patent reasons, open sourcing reasons, and, uh, and you know, just user preference reasons. So what Gecko Linux does is they provide the same, uh, the same release model. They have their static releases and they also have their rolling releases and they support basically all of the major desktop environments, which is really exciting. They did have a budgie spin there for a little bit. I don't know where that's gone, but uh, it is what it is, I guess. But right now I'm using the, uh, the Gecko Linux rolling plasma release. Okay, so what does Gecko Linux actually do out of the box? Some of the key things that stand out to me straight out of the box when you start playing around with Gecko Linux, as opposed to the just the generic OpenSUSE release, is font rendering is a lot better out of the box. Um, font rendering has improved greatly in the default release of OpenSUSE. I mentioned it in the OpenSUSE Leap 15 review, um, but font rendering in Gecko Linux is just as good on, as you could get on any Linux distribution out there. When it comes to proprietary codecs and other software like that, you've got all of the repositories installed and enabled by default and all of the codecs that you could ever want or need installed out of the box as well. Um, now, again, for the person who knows what they're doing, this isn't too big of a deal, but for just getting up and getting started, you have the uh, obviously the main open source tumbleweed repositories. You also have Google Chrome, NVIDIA and Skype uh, and Pac-Man all enabled out of the box um, with uh, Gecko Linux. Basically, this just takes a good bit of work out of getting started. Now it also is worth mentioning that the way that I have the theme set up at the moment is not how it comes out of the box. Uh, by default, it uses the Numix theme. And uh, as you can see, the, the Numix theme is uh, it's actually pretty nice. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. So I might leave it there for the rest of the video. Um, but this is more or less what it would look like out of the box if you were to install the, uh, the plasma, the rolling plasma ISO and then update it fully. Also, when it comes to the installation media for Gecko Linux, it uses the Calamares installer, or at least however you say that, the same installer that Manjaro uses. That's the installer that the Gecko Linux images use out, uh, out of the box, which I think is a much more end user friendly installation as opposed to the default tool that you usually get in OpenSUSE, which is of course Yast. One of the best things about OpenSUSE is Yast, but it doesn't make for the absolute best experience when it comes to installing uh, OpenSUSE as a, as a new or relatively new Linux user. Okay, so if I can summarize basically the features that make Gecko Linux unique, you can kind of just look at the screen. Uh, when it comes to, you've got a much better uh, installation media for, uh, for desktop users. You can choose whatever desktop environment floats your boat. You've got excellent font rendering out of the box. You've got TLP for better power management on laptops. You've got plenty of software installed out of the box, even some that is patent incumbent. And you have the ability to remove software from the desktop without breaking a desktop pattern and ending up that software being reinstalled later on. Okay, that's kind of where the similarities end in terms of uh, what OpenSUSE, or sorry, what, what Gecko Linux does differently to OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. The rest of this video is gonna be around Tumbleweed. So let us apply the OpenSUSE uh, desktop wallpaper, just so we feel like we're getting down to business here. Now, right out the gate, here's what I love about OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. And, and this is what I, people have been telling me for ages. When it comes to the upgrade cycle and the ability to use the latest software, um, I've always been in two minds about this. With the emergence of universal packaging, um, such as Flatpak, Snap, and App Image, I am less inclined to care about having an up-to-date uh, system. However, there is something huge to be said for the elegance and streamlined nature of having a system that default package management is up to date. Like the, the packages that live in the repositories are at their latest version. And Tumbleweed manages to pull this off with a certain amount of elegance that is really, really hard to replicate. So the other day, um, you know, just cruising through Twitter as you do, um, there was a Manjaro update that came through that really messed a few people up. And, uh, and the conversation immediately switched to, uh, you know, has anybody tried OpenSUSE Tumbleweed recently? The last time I tried it, it is super rock solid stable and it seems like nothing will break it. I've been running it for years. 
And uh, that conversation is one that I've heard reoccurring time and time again uh, as I've gone through the last few years in my Linux journey. Uh, so that means that uh, it does have a reputation to uphold. When it comes to my personal experience out of the box using this, uh, with the ISO that I had to work with from Gecko Linux, that ISO was quite old. Like, uh, like the last release to the ISO was back in 2018, June of 2018. That is a lifetime of Linux software updates. I mean, just look at some of the version numbers here. We're dealing with a 4.16 Linux kernel, Firefox Quantum version 60, so forth and so on. This is crazy. Now, the reason I say it's crazy is because when I booted up this system for the first time, opening the terminal, and I kid you not, all I did was type sudo zipper dup. It went out, refreshed all the pre-enabled repositories that come on Gecko Linux, and it presented me with about 1700 packages to update, about 1.1 gig or so to download, and it went off almost without a hitch. All the packages updated, they went through really quickly, like Zipper is really quick, and I'm using this on a virtual machine. Uh, but not only that, that kind of update, more than 18 months worth of soft, almost 18 months worth of software updates, that is enough to make most rolling distributions uh, really start to quiver. Whereas uh, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed has not really even batted an eye. Now, I will give one big caveat, and I don't know if that's unique to Gecko Linux or if that's OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, but in either case, I will say this. The only thing, the only thing that I had to do in order to get this running the way I wanted it to was to update the grub file. Because for whatever reason, when I rebooted the system after the massive zipper uh, system update from what it was back in June of 2018 to what it is currently, uh, the uh, the grub boot menu did not update at all. So I would just keep booting back into the old kernel. Um, so I just ran the update grub configuration uh, or command, sorry, that you can see here on the screen and um, that fixed it. That's the only issue that I've had uh, with updating this system so far. Now, again, I can't speak into months of using this thing because I've only been using this particular release of OpenSUSE Tumbleweed for about a week now and just playing around with it, tinkering around with it and seeing how far I can push it. Now, the other powerful thing that OpenSUSE has going for it, OpenSUSE has going for it, is uh, desktop patterns. This is something that a lot of people really, really appreciate and I certainly do as well. When it comes to you wanting to play around with different desktop environments, being able to simply come into the software manager and click on uh, just a checkbox to install a desktop environment and all of its recommended uh, applications that go with it is amazing. For example, Mate. If I wanted to install Mate, I could just do that uh, and then check all of the bits and pieces that I uh, and I will actually see out of the box what is going to be installed when I do that. And, uh, and away we go. Or I can do the same for games, graphics, uh, so forth and so on. If you are working in a particular developer environment and you want to be able to install all of the tools and frameworks to support that developer environment, uh, check it out. I mean, that's pretty cool. So without going into too much detail, I'm just going to quickly fly through the default installed applications here. There's nothing really uh, amazing or truly noteworthy in any of these selections. Most of them are just kind of bog standard open source applications. The power that is in the OpenSUSE Tumbleweed desktop is the fact that you will get up to date software that is tested. It is relatively uh, and from all accounts that I keep hearing around the Internet is going to be stable. And in my week or so of playing around with it, that's definitely held true for me, especially when you consider that this release is based on an ISO that came out almost 18 months ago to not have any system breakages there, I think is a uh, is a Christmas miracle. So go check out Gecko Linux or check out OpenSUSE Tumbleweed if you so desire. Uh, for me personally, I would definitely unreservedly recommend the Gecko Linux ISOs as they have a better installer, they have more desktop environments to choose from out of the box, and they have much better font rendering and they have the repositories 
uh, enabled out of the box as well. So you will have the best desktop experience if you just go and download Gecko Rolling from one, uh, from one of their desktop environments that they provide. But if you're a full on nerd and you want to do it all yourself, go ahead, be my guest. OpenSUSE Tumbleweed ISO is there waiting for you. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I will see you all in the very next video. Let me know what you think about OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, what has been your experience and, uh, and how often has it broken for you, for, for long time users out there. I'm really curious. Thank you so much and uh, see you in the next one. Peace.